Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will start with Carve Pro version 11.5, and this is your first time opening it, this is what the home screen will look like when you open it. Therefore, in the left panel we will have our startup tasks, in which we can create a new file, create a new file from a template or open an existing file. And after that, you will have your recent open files here. Well, after that, there will be a video tutorial that you can watch here. And then at the bottom it will be the Vectric online resource website. In conjunction with Vectric Media, a design and make clip art website. To start a new file, we must click to create a new file. And this is where you will organize your work. First you have the type of job to create. If you are carving one side only of the material, you must click one side. If you plan to cut two sides of the material, you want to set it as two sides. Finally, if it's a rotary job, you must set it up as a rotary. For this example, we're going to be using the single-sided option, and we'll go more in-depth than the double-sided and rotary in future lessons. Next is going to set the job size. So, this is going to be the complete material size that you're starting with. So this will be the full size of your material that you start with. So let's say you were working with a 2 by 4 foot sheet of material, you would have typed the width here, say 24 inches, then the height would be 48 inches. And then the thickness will say that it will be 0.5 inches. So that will be your work size. It is crucial to ensure that you obtain accurate measurements, especially when it comes to thickness, as it is the most critical measurement that your CNC will reference. Therefore, it is essential to aim for precision and get as close as possible to the exact measurement. Keep in mind that even if the material is labeled as half inch, it may be slightly smaller or larger. Generally, it tends to be slightly smaller, which is why it is crucial to use precise measuring tools such as calipers to obtain accurate measurements. Okay, and you can see these are all set up in inches. If you prefer metric measurements, you can switch to metric units by adjusting the settings down here. The next step is to determine your zero positions, which is the reference point for your tools. For instance, if you want to use the top surface of your material as the reference point, you should select material surface as your zero position. If you prefer to use the machine bed as your reference point, you will notice the zero point moving to the bottom. In this case, you should zero your tools to the bottom of your material surface. Generally, to determine the appropriate reference point, consider the type of project you are working on. For instance, if you are only carving on the top surface of the material, such as engraving or inlay work, it's best to zero off the material surface to ensure accurate depths. On the other hand, if you are working on a project that involves cutting through most of the material, you may want to zero off the machine bed. Doing so will ensure that the depth of cut is nicely referenced off the spoil board, preventing it from cutting deeper than the zero point set at the bottom. Zeroing off the machine bed is also useful for 3D projects where a lot of the material is machined away from the top surface, making it challenging to zero from the top. By using the machine bed as your reference point, you will always have a consistent reference point, regardless of how much material you remove from the top surface. In summary, choosing the appropriate reference point will depend on the specific project you are working on, and you may need to determine it on a case-by-case -case basis. Don't worry if you choose the machine bed as your reference point, as your tools won't plunge straight down for the first cut. Although you reference your tools from the machine bed, the height of your tools is set by the material's thickness and the Z safety height that you established in the toolpath tab. As a result, your tool will start above the material and won't plunge straight down, even if you set the machine bed as your reference point. Moving on to the XY datum position, this determines the starting point for your X and Y zero. The most common location for the XY0 is the lower left corner, which is an industry standard for most machines. This reference point will zero off the lowest and leftmost point of your material. Keep this in mind when setting up your project. And then finally down here is going to be only for 3D projects. So that's going to be your modeling resolution. And then next we have material settings. And once again, this is only going to pertain to 3D projects. After setting up your job, you can always go back and modify the settings if needed. Once you click OK, your new project will begin. If you need to make any adjustments, you can find a button called Setup Job Dimensions and Origin located in the file operations. 
Clicking on this button will bring you back to the same settings, where you can make any necessary changes. In this section, the only thing that will be new is the ability to scale your design according to the job size. If you have already created a design and measured your material incorrectly, you can check a box and scale down the material size. This will automatically adjust the size of your entire project to match the new material size. This is a useful feature to have. By default, when you open your project, you will be in the 2D view within the drawing tab. This is where you will find all your design tools. If you are using version 11 or higher, the tabs will be located on the left-hand side. However, if you are using version 10.5 or below, the tabs will be located at the bottom of the drawing tab. Okay, so the next tab you would have is the modeling tab. The molding tab in VCarve Pro is a powerful feature that includes a variety of tools for creating 3D models. One of the key features of the molding tab is the ability to import 3D models from various file formats, such as STL and OBJ. Once imported, users can easily scale, rotate, and manipulate the 3D model to their liking. In addition to basic manipulation tools, the molding tab also includes features such as fading and tilting, which can add depth and dimensionality to the model. Users can also create vector boundaries to define specific areas of the model and apply smoothing filters to create a more polished appearance. The molding tab also offers tools for scaling the z-axis height, slicing 3D models, and adding a plan to the model. These tools allow for greater customization and precision when modifying 3D models. Overall, the molding tab in VCarve Pro is a robust toolset for manipulating 3D models. Its range of features and customization options make it an asset for designers and makers looking to create high-quality 3D models with precision and ease. Next up is the Clip Art tab which provides a library of preloaded vectors and 3D objects that come with the software. The Clip Art tab in VCarve Pro is a great resource for those who need to quickly add pre-made designs to their projects. The tab provides a library of preloaded vectors and 3D objects that come with the software, making it easy to add high-quality designs to your work. The Clip Art tab is organized into several categories, including animals, signs, sports, and more. Users can search for specific designs within each category or browse through the entire library to find inspiration. In addition to the preloaded 2D and 3D designs, the Clip Art tab also includes a feature that allows users to import their own designs. This can be especially helpful for those who need to incorporate custom logos or other unique designs into their projects. Overall, the Clip Art tab is a powerful tool that can save users time and effort by providing a vast selection of pre-made designs to choose from. Whether you're a professional designer or a hobbyist, the Clip Art tab is a valuable resource that can help take your projects to the next level. And then after that, we're going to have our Layers tab. The Layers tab in VCarve Pro is a powerful feature that allows users to organize and manage multiple layers of vectors and toolpaths in their projects. You can see we have layers in this layer tab, as well as up here in the layer control. When working with complex designs or projects that require multiple cuts and toolpaths, the Layers tab can help simplify the process by allowing users to easily toggle visibility and editability of different layers. This can help avoid mistakes and make it easier to keep track of different aspects of the design. In addition to organizing vectors and toolpaths, the Layers tab also allows for grouping of vectors and toolpaths within each layer, making it easier to manipulate specific elements of the design. Users can also set the order in which layers are cut, which can be helpful when working with materials that require multiple passes. Another useful feature of the Layers tab is the ability to lock layers, which can prevent accidental changes to certain aspects of the design. This can be particularly helpful when collaborating with others or when revisiting a project after some time has passed. Overall, the Layers tab in VCarve Pro is an important tool for managing and organizing complex designs and can help streamline the process of creating high-quality projects with precision and accuracy. And then after that, we have what's called Sheets. In VCarve Pro version 11 or above, the Sheets tab is available. This tab allows users to work on multiple sheets or parts within the same file. Sheets are like virtual canvases where different designs can be created and organized within the same project file. Each sheet can have its own set of vectors, toolpaths, and settings, allowing for more efficient project management and organization. 
The Sheets tab provides users with a variety of options for managing and organizing their project sheets. Users can add new sheets, edit existing sheets, delete sheets, and even export individual sheets as separate project files. This feature is particularly useful for those working on multi-part projects or designs with multiple iterations. OK, so that is all the design tabs on the left-hand side of the screen. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to have what's called the Toolpath tab. In vCarve Pro, the right-hand side of the screen is dedicated to the Toolpath tab. This is where you can create and customize toolpaths for your designs. The Toolpath tab allows you to choose the type of toolpath you want to create, such as profile cutting, pocketing, drilling, or v-carving. You can also adjust the cutting depth, cutting speed, and other parameters for each toolpath. In addition to the standard toolpaths, vCarve Pro also includes advanced toolpaths such as fluting, molding, and textured toolpaths. These allow you to create intricate designs with a variety of surface textures and patterns. In addition to the 2D toolpath options, vCarve Pro also offers 3D toolpath options for roughing and finishing 3D models. These options can be found in the Toolpath tab on the right-hand side of the screen. The 3D roughing toolpath is used to remove large amounts of material quickly and efficiently. This toolpath follows a roughing strategy that removes the material in layers, leaving a stepped finish. The 3D finishing toolpath is then used to remove the remaining material and create a smooth finish. This toolpath follows a finishing strategy that gradually removes material in smaller steps, creating a smoother surface finish. The toolpath options in vCarve Pro are highly customizable, allowing users to adjust the step over, spindle speed, and other parameters to achieve the desired finish. The software also includes a simulation feature that allows users to preview the toolpath before cutting the material, reducing the risk of errors and wasted materials. This lets you see exactly how the toolpath will look when it's cut into the material, so you can make any necessary adjustments before cutting the design. Overall, the Toolpath tab in vCarve Pro is an essential tool for creating precise and intricate designs for CNC machines. With its wide range of customizable toolpaths and advanced features, vCarve Pro is a powerful tool for both professional and hobbyist designers. On the right-hand side of the screen, there is a button to access the Toolpath tab in vCarve Pro. Clicking on this button will open the tab, and it will disappear if the mouse is moved outside of it. If you want to keep it open, you can click on the pin button in the corner. This tab contains all your toolpath operations, which you will use to create toolpaths for your designs. And there are buttons at the top of the toolpath tab, as well as the design tab. If you click the button in the design tab, it will auto-hide the design tab and only show the toolpath tab. Similarly, if you click the button in the toolpath tab, it will hide the toolpath tab and only show the design tab. You can also switch between the tabs using keyboard shortcuts. To go to the Toolpath tab, press F12 on your keyboard, and to go to the Design tab, press F11. OK, so that's going to be all your designing and Toolpath tools. When working on a project in vCarve Pro, the center of the screen is where you will find the project area in the 2D view. This is where you can create and manipulate your designs using the various tools available in the software. However, vCarve Pro also includes a 3D view tab which allows you to preview your designs in a three-dimensional space. This is a valuable feature as it enables you to see a rendering of what the final project will look like, which can help you make important design decisions and catch any mistakes before they are carved out of the material. The 3D view window is also fully rotatable, allowing you to view your project from any angle. This can be especially useful when working on complex designs or when you need to examine a certain area in more detail. In summary, the project area in the 2D view and the 3D view tab are essential components of vCarve Pro. By utilizing these features, you can create and preview your designs with greater precision and confidence, ultimately leading to a higher quality finished product. You can switch between the 2D and 3D view by using the keyboard shortcut keys F3 to go to the 3D view and F2 to go to the 2D view. OK, and then at the very top, we're going to have all our zooming tools as well as some extra tools up here. The left and top panel displays the ruler which indicates the exact size of the project. The zero point is the reference point from where the project is zeroed. At the bottom of the screen, the X and Y coordinates are displayed as you move the mouse referencing from the zero point. 
If the project is zeroed at the lower left, the mouse location at that point is considered as the zero location, and any movement of the mouse references that location. This is a brief overview of how to start a project and the layout of the software. In this course, we will delve deeper into using the different tools and features of the software. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.